Hello and welcome back. So this video is going to be all about the attempted murder of the Duke of Cumberland and the death of his valet. Prince Ernest, the Duke of Cumberland, was the fifth son of King George III of England and his wife Queen Charlotte. He was born on the 5th of June 1771 and in 1837 became the King of Hanover. Okay, so first a little bit about the Duke of Cumberland. He actually has loads of rumours and scandals about him. So his sisters did not like him. They found it really uncomfortable to be around him and apparently they were reluctant to be left alone with him. There is a rumour that says the Duke actually had an incestuous relationship with his sister Princess Sophie and that this relationship resulted in a child. Now Princess Sophie did actually have a child out of wedlock but it wasn't with her brother, it was with someone else. But whether or not the Duke and Sophie actually had an incestuous relationship is probably unlikely but that is one of the rumours that is about him. So Queen Victoria's mother, before she became Queen Victoria, actually thought that the Duke was passing stories about Victoria's sickly constitution onto the press and that the Duke wanted Victoria dead so then he would be king because the Duke of Cumberland was Victoria's heir at the time. And there was also a scandal surrounding his marriage to Princess Frederica of Slaum's Brownfeds. And there was also scandal surrounding his marriage to Princess Frederica of Salaam's Brownfells. So Frederica had actually been engaged to the Duke's younger brother, Adolphus, Duke of Cambridge. Frederica had jilted him to go off and marry the Prince of Salaam's Brownfells, but he had then had his marriage to Frederica annulled because of her loose behaviour. The royal family thought that the match was an insult and Queen Charlotte refused to receive Frederica at court. Parliament wouldn't increase the Duke's allowance so the couple moved abroad. And there were many instances of harassment and adultery including one with the Lord Chancellor's wife Lady Lyndhurst. People thought that the Duke was capable of all forms of wickedness and immorality. And now we get to the other scandal that surrounds the Duke and that is his near murder and the death of his valet. In the early morning of the 31st of May 1810, the Duke of Cumberland came running from his room shouting, Neil, Neil, I am murdered. Someone had snuck into the Duke's room, grabbed his sabre and then struck him over the head with it. The Duke was struck with the sabre a number of times and he had four wounds to his head and he had four wounds to his head that were so bad that his brain was exposed. According to his surgeon, it is actually miraculous that he survived this attack. So the Duke said that at first he didn't actually realise he was being attacked. He had thought that a bat had managed to get into his room and was actually flying into his face. But after the third blow of his sabre, that was when he realised he was being attacked. So with the adrenaline running through him and mustering all the strength he could, the Duke managed to get out of bed and make his way to the door. But just as he got to the door, there was another blow from the sabre and this time it cut his thigh. So the Duke managed to get out of his room and call for help and this call brought his page Cornelius Neal running to him to help him. So Neil went into the Duke's room to confront his attacker but the attacker had already left by another door and from here the attacker could have run off and have been anywhere in the palace. So Neil wanted to go off and chase after the attacker but the Duke insisted that he stay with him and instead said to rouse the whole household to start searching and to also to sort of lock down the palace so that he couldn't get out. So the Duke's rooms were searched again and in one of the closets in the room they found evidence of who his attacker was. The closet where he supposed the assassin was concealed, informant found a pair of black leather slippers with the name Celis written in each slipper. 
which informant believes to be of the handwriting of Joseph Sellers, an Italian, one of the valets of his Royal Highness, the Duke of Cumberland. There was also a dark lantern, a bottle of water and a scabbard of the sword which was found upon the floor in the bedroom. There was also two bolsters which are used in the daytime for ornamenting the bed of his Royal Highness and the key of the closet was in the inside of the door which was not usual and could have been of no use but for the purpose of locking the door where he supposes the assassin had concealed himself. So with this evidence against Joseph Sellis, a porter and Neil's wife Anne went looking for him. So they got to Sellis's bedroom door and they knocked and knocked but no one was answering the door so they decided to go and find another way to enter his place. So when they got to this other door that would have taken them into Celis's room, Anne could hear a gurgling sound coming from the room followed by a splash of liquid hitting the floor. The porter looked into the room and saw Celis dead in there with his throat cut. It was thought that Celis had tried to kill the Duke and then had committed suicide by cutting his throat afterwards. But why would Celis want to kill the Duke and did he really commit suicide afterwards? Or was Celis actually the victim of an attacker too? Joseph Celis had been born in Corsica and he had been a valet to the Duke of Cumberland for five years. Now people had different opinions of Celis. Some people thought he was opinionated, quarrelsome and full of his own importance, while others thought him inoffensive, gentle and shy. So even though Celis was actually a valued part of the royal household, he and the Duke used to disagree with each other a lot and Celis would often leave the Duke's appointment but would soon return. So an inquest into the attack was opened on the 1st of June and it was revealed that before Silas had worked for the Duke of Cumberland he worked for a gentleman in New York. A chest that had belonged to this gentleman had been broken into and a gold watch, some jewels and a load of money had been stolen from him. So the only person who could have broken into this chest was someone from inside the gentleman's household and the gentleman concluded that it must have been Celis who had done it because he had almost unlimited access to the private compartments and also he owned a hammer that fitted the marks on the chest. But with no actual real evidence that it was Celis that had done this, he was just released from his employment. It was also said that while in New York, Salis would often loudly and proudly proclaim his opposition to the British royal family. He would damn the king and he said that he was the man who had thrown a stone at the king outside the House of Commons. Now in the employment of the Duke of Cumberland, Salis and Neil did not get on at all. Neil said a year before the attack on the Duke of Cumberland, Celis had actually verbally attacked him and that Neil was concerned that Celis wanted to do him harm. Neil said he believed that Celis wanted to murder the Duke of Cumberland and then put the blame on to him on to Neil. But maybe it was Neil who wanted to see Celis hang for a crime he did not commit. Celis had gone after Neil the year before, but it was to call out the fraud that Neil was committing. Celis said in a letter to the Duke of Cumberland's secretary that Neil had been fiddling his expenses and also the expenses of the household for his own benefit. Celis wrote that he would rather be redeployed than be forced to work with Neil. He found Neil a rogue with whom no human being is able to live upon friendly terms no longer can I live with this monster. But nothing came out of this accusation. So the result of the inquest was obviously that Celis had attacked the Duke and then gone to his room and filled with like, guilt and fear had committed suicide. So the inquest concluded that after Celis had attacked the Duke, he had gone back to his room and with guilt and terror had slit his own throat with such force that the cut went down to his spine and almost severed his head. And the reason that he had actually attacked 
the Duke of Cumberland was because he was jealous of Neil. Neil's wife was a royal housekeeper, whereas Celis' wife wasn't. And Neil had had apartments in St. James's Palace way before Celis got his. But was Celis actually the murderer? And was the Duke of Cumberland involved in Celis's death? So in 1812, Henry White, in his publication, The Independent Whig, accused the Duke of Cumberland of being party to his valet's murder. But why would the Duke want Salis dead? There are actually many rumours going around. One was that the Duke had actually had a child with Salis's wife. One was that the Duke and Salis were actually lovers, but then when Neil had come along, he had stolen the Duke away from Celis. And another rumour was that the Duke was actually being blackmailed by Celis over an affair the Duke was having with another male servant. So Henry White published a series of letters in the Independent Whig and one of these letters posed eight questions. And these questions were, first, was not the report well founded that it was not till after repeated attempts had been made that the jury could be found sufficiently hardy to say that Celis was his own executioner? Secondly, was not the razor with which it was concluded the business was done found a great distance from the body? Thirdly, was not the coat of the domestic drenched with blood found on a chair at a considerable distance from the body? Fourthly, whether the basin was not placed deliberately at the side of the bed evidently for the purpose of catching the blood. Fifthly, whether the body was not nearly cold when found. Sixthly, whether Celis was not troubled with such an asthmatic cough that it would have been impossible for him to conceal himself for more than half an hour without betraying himself. Seventhly, as to the situation of the slippers in the closet in which it was supposed that he concealed himself. Eighthly, was not the neck cloth cut in pieces in such a way as to militate strongly against the idea of the deceased having cut his own throat? It is obvious that the letter was implying that Celis was murdered and then the whole scene made to look like a suicide. In these letters, the murderer was just referred to as the blank. So it was quite easy to sort of fill in this blank to see who they were suggesting that the murderer was. So with this letter, Hemi White was actually sued for liable, even though he didn't actually write the letter. He did put it in his publication and sold this publication. So he was sued for liable, which he lost and was sentenced to 15 months in Newgate prison and had to pay a 200 pound fine. So that was that until 1830. The Right Honourable Thomas North Lord Graves, aged 54, who destroyed himself by cutting his throat with a razor. The body of the noble Lord presented a most frightful spectacle. His head was nearly severed from his body. So Lord Graves was the Duke of Cumberland's Lord of the Bedchamber and in 1830 rumours were going around that Lord Graves' wife was actually the mistress of the Duke of Cumberland. So Lord Graves was not happy that his wife was having an affair so he had wrote a note to her, given it to his messenger and then gone into his bedroom and cut his throat with such force that his head was nearly decapitated. Now the fact that two people who were close to the Duke of Cumberland died in a very similar way aroused people's suspicion. Even the Times newspaper thought it weird. But Lord Graves was suffering from poor mental health and melancholy, so it could have just been that his wife's affair pushed him a bit over the edge and not that he had been murdered. But then in 1832, uh, Josiah Phillips published a book called Authentic Records of the Court of England for the last 70 years. In it, he stated that the general opinion was that the Duke was a murderer. He said in his book that the Duke and Neil were lovers and that Celis had found them together. Celis had threatened to expose them, so he had been killed either by the Duke or by someone acting on behalf of the Duke. Neil had then made the scene look like a suicide. Afterwards, Lord Ellensborough, who was the person in charge of the inquest, steered the investigation to go the way the Duke wanted it to go, that 
Sellis had attacked him and then committed suicide. Philip said that Ellensburg had actually chosen a jury that would go the way that he wanted it to go and that he had refused a witness that could have blown the whole conspiracy to bits. So Josiah Phillips was now sued for libel and found guilty and sentenced to six months in prison but before this he managed to flee the country. So throughout history the Duke of Cumberland has been portrayed as a cruel incestuous murdering sodomite and that is really how he is still thought of today but when he became king of Hangover he was actually a really well liked and beloved king. He was really kind. So that was the scandal of the near death of the Duke of Cumberland and then the strange death of his valet was it suicide was it murder i personally well, I'm, I'm not an expert on cutting throats but can a person really cut their own throat so deeply down that they nearly decapitate themselves i, I don't know but if the duke and neil had killed silas like what josiah phillips was saying does that mean that the duke and neil actually done the injuries to the duke themselves to make it look like he was attacked beforehand or was when Salis confronting them about what he had seen had he attacked the duke then because there had been a fight or maybe the whole thing might have been neil acting on his own maybe he had actually attacked the duke and then put the blame on Salis by hiding all these things that belonged to Salis in the closet because he was the first person to get to the Duke and he could easily have been following the Duke out of the door when he was attacking him and then the Duke could be there all disorientated calling for Neil he could have dropped the sabre and then been like yes I'm here what's up and the Duke might have not realized that he was so close to him because he would have been all over the place this way Neil could have probably killed Salis before he had attacked the Duke. Anyway that's my musings on the whole thing. Um, I hope you live. So anyway that's my musings and questions about the whole thing. Uh, what do you want to think? Let me know and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!